a recording. It's like, hi, this is a recording. And then... You ain't say that you had beef with Blue G. Welcome back to a episode of Blue Beef with Blue Cheese. Forgot it's been so long. I forgot the name of the show. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, it's at this point. It's almost like we got to come up with something different. <laughs> yeah, it's different. It's a different show. Yeah, right. It's uh, I had I had an idea. Uh, yeah, I was gonna mention. I was gonna text this to you of changing the whole uh, part thing at the point of the show, but then we'd have to change yeah. the name of it because what I what I had doesn't beef with blue cheese wouldn't fit. Okay. So like I'm I I thought about like going back and going through rap albums as they were released, like because I I don't know okay. so so much about the early days of hip hop. I just I don't listen to or know and really care to, mm -hmm. uh, and, and care to enjoy anyway. I'd love to know about it and then be able to you know ignore it after that. <laughs> like if we went back, <laughs> just and, like, do some research and then just instantly forget about it. Yeah, but at least at least know mm -hmm. at least know like okay, this was the trajectory of rap music, yeah. and go through like mm -hmm. pick out like the first, like you know the first wouldn't be even albums. Like I don't know, like did they even put out albums of like you know Grandmaster Flash? Like did he have, was there was there a full album or was it just like I don't like, know. They were like all songs. break beats, right? Isn't that like what they did? There was uh, yeah. I think uh, believe it or not, Murs has like a really good in one of his songs. He has like a really good breakdown of the timeline on how that happened really um and like and like what they did like it, he goes into like how they took music out of schools and then um they were smart enough to come up with this like two track system with a uh record player to yeah hook into like a street light to steal electricity from the street light to do it on the street and yeah. kind of cut up yeah I mean, i've heard, I've heard a little stories yeah. yeah i mean you know i've heard stuff like that told over the year mm -hmm. so he does that in a song i guess obviously yeah yeah, yeah he covers it in one of the songs yeah, uh, he, and he just did a he just did a song. He just released a song called the DOC, which is like a tribute to, um, like, uh, Jay Z and um, okay, what was it? What was that guy's name that he did? Like, he was like his um, rock. I guess it was R, not rock. Uh, R O C rock. So it was rock. So it was yeah. Okay. Who was the guy? Uh, I I so was not interested in in that no. form of hip hop at the time that I don't even remember like so it was like rock with uh it was Jay Z and it was like if anybody's listening to this they're screaming it but it doesn't matter anyway so he but he yeah. did like it was like a tribute song to like saying how important that era was which surprises me because like I have so much respect for Merce and apparently he was a big fan of that era mm -hmm. of uh, rap and I guess what. Jesus, yeah i like skipped over that part too i never for whatever reason i like i definitely like reasonable doubt and then yeah. like like once the black album hit i completely just put it out of my mind i never yeah. listened to any of that yeah and i think the black album is good like i i kind of yeah i do too i kind of yeah. yeah i kind of i checked in and out of jay-z at the time because he had, he had put out mm -hmm. some bad stuff i thought before that but then i I, I would always check back and still do occasionally check in, but it's like more and more brief as the time goes by. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll give them less and less time on an album, but I'm yeah. like, okay, I see like that's good production, but like, I don't know. I just, I'm not interested in what he's doing these days. Um, but yeah, but he, but Murs on this, on this song talks about how the black album was like, you know, the gift. And like that's, it was like the really? magnum opus of, yeah. Like how, you know, I guess. And, uh, but then it was like all it was like you know freeway and it was like a bunch of other rappers like uh, from that label That's at the time right, so yeah um anyway so that will I'll, I'll say like uh yeah i just i would be interested to go back and know more about that and like listen to each song but yeah i'm actually gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna look up grandmaster flash discography this is obviously <laughs> we've already gone off like, the rails huh We've already gone. Yeah, there, was no, the there was no rails. There was no rails to begin with on this. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, official website of DJ Grandmaster Flash. Wow. He gets a lot of traffic these days. Okay. Discography. All right. So albums. Okay. So the message was a full album. Yeah. So the message. Yeah. There was eight. Okay. Songs on an album called the message but the message was obviously so yeah i feel like i feel like that may be the only 
Grandmaster Flair song I've ever heard in my life might be the message. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe if I play so something was else. He, so he, oh, was, he, he, uh, was he from the Bronx? Was he like a Bronx guy or was he from somewhere else? Because I know that's kind of like where it, whole st- where it all started. I guess like early 80s, late 70s or something like that. Yeah. Um, let's look it up. <laughs> uh, Bronx, I'm, yeah. I'm just looking through J Live Genius lyrics right now. Um, yeah, I have that up on a, on a different um, on a different website. This is now just uh, two guys googling rap music. Um, yeah, this is the n- new show. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's the other show. That's the we go by yeah. Sugar Hill Gang and then the go away walk okay. through, up through uh, you know like African Bombada. And, yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, and like who knows? Maybe there's some stuff in there. Like, as even the other day, I was thinking about it. I'm like, what's like the oldest? Like. I feel like BDP is like, mm-hmm. I was like listening to that. I'm like, yeah, this is like the first time where it like sounds kind of, it still sounds old school hip hop, but I like it, you know, cause it's, I don't know. But even from like public enemy and all the, you know, like stuff like I had never, you know, so it would be a lot to go through like every, every album, every rap album that charted through the years from the beginning of rap till, you know, whatever. And then, yeah, you obviously, yeah. Some that you would, every, every, and then every, or every album of note, you know, in the timeline mm-hmm. just to kind of like see the, yeah. the trajectory of the whole thing and then you would end up at uh j live at some point in uh, april exactly 2nd, somewhere in the uh, early 2000s <laughs> april 2nd 2002 you would end up with uh, j live yeah. where he was uh i mean maybe like the most conscious of all conscious hip-hop you know like yeah but looking back on it by far i mean I, he was an english teacher or professor um what i think it, what was he uh middle school or elementary school something like that yeah um but obviously well uh well uh educated dude yeah and um certainly brings up a lot of topics in this that are like 20 years ahead of its time almost like it's very like it's very strange how it's come like full circle yeah. like every 20 years it's a, it seems to be something that needs to be discussed for uh-huh. whatever reason yeah yeah um yeah you mean like as far as like i hate this term but like wokeness <laughs> yeah like, i don't even that... know if it's wokeness because his like his thoughts really aren't like woke it's like kind of more Common. just yeah it's just like saying the quiet part out loud almost like like what everybody's thinking what everybody yeah. should be talking about and he's just actually bringing light to it yeah but yeah because yeah i mean it just it still makes sense but right yeah yeah well it's sad that you know you could rap about it but unless you and even he didn't was he wasn't that that didn't hit that big but even if you did, mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter. It's not going to change anything. People just if it's no. if it's got a good beat, they'll they'll rock along to it. But nobody really cares exactly. what you're saying. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good vocabulary, which is uh, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just always adds a little something when you can use words that you're not used to hearing in in songs in general. Even yeah. like yesterday, I was listening to Mob Deep. And at one point they used the word garments, like something like, you know, like you even said, like, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to like shoot through your garments or something like that. And I'm like, I just love the word. Like, I love the word garments, garments. in a rap, especially Instead if like, like it's or, a violent, yeah. it's a violent sentence and you're using the word garment. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I just love any time that it's where it's like, oh yeah, I didn't expect that word to show up there. Um, yeah. Should I play this song? We, we said satisfied, right? We're going to play. Yeah 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 um yeah and this is the epitome i mean the album as a whole is very insightful and has a lot of different topics but this song kind of like encompasses them all and puts it all into one spot basically yeah all right well let's see let's do it can you hear that yeah <laughs> fall back to that trap again hey, yo, Camera, tragedy, comedy, romance, you better dance when you fight and stand so you never have a fighting chance in a rat race where the referee's son started way in advance. Okay, so yeah, he's talking about, I guess, um, nepotism at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, actually, so it's funny because the beat is pretty it's simple. And, you know, I, I always got to talk about the beat. It always jumps out yeah. first to me. Um, but there's, you know, there's one part of this beat, like with it and, and introduce like that kind of like flute or whatever it is, or I don't know what it is, some type of mm-hmm. wind instrument and something the, like that. Yeah. yeah. A lute. 
or flute. <laughs> it was. I think it was a lute. Anything with an oot. It's something okay. with an oot, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, yeah, and then you get like the uh, the uh, girls singing in the background. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's keep going. Still, you live in the American dream. Silk PJ sheets and down pillows. Who the fuck will want to wake up? You got it good like hot sex after the breakup. Your four car garage is just more space to take up. You even bought your mama new whip. Scrap the jalopy. Thousand dollar habit. Million dollar hobby. Thousand dollar habit, million dollar hobby. Okay, yeah. let me think. What, is, what does that mean? Thousand dollar habit. So I think he's probably talking about, and I didn't, haven't really, um, I don't think I looked it up, but I think he's talking about, um, it's almost like I, maybe like people overspending what they actually have. Right. Um, you think he's talking so, about uh, like rappers who make a lot of, like, I mean, I don't know. Right? If you hear somebody rapping about be. somebody, you always just like it has a lot of money. I always just my first thought is they always you're talking about rappers, but maybe that you know, but maybe it's bigger than that. He's just talking about anybody who's yeah. successful and uh, living more lavish than anybody needs to. You know, yeah. like I don't know, like yeah, people should be able to make as much money as they want, but nobody should want to make that much money. So it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? I don't know. There's no, there's yeah, no it's almost it. like, yeah. And, and then that's when you get into a lot of the stuff that he talks about regarding like class. So it's not even really, I mean, it, it is a race thing, but it's also it, once it gets to a certain point, it's a class issue. Like right. Will Smith kids have way more privilege than my kids have. And yeah, that's just, that, that's just because he's Will Smith. That's not because they're white and they're black. Right, that, right. So I think that's what he's getting at a little bit. Like you get these guys who get a lot of money and then all of a sudden it, it's like, okay, yeah, I just do this. I spend whatever a thousand yeah. bucks a week on this as a, as a habit. And then when I'm bored or I'm, uh, I got something to do, or I want something, it's just a hobby for me to buy yachts. Like that's, a, that's my hobby is yachting. Yeah. Right. So now you're, it's, yeah. I mean, I think it has a couple of different meanings what he's getting at. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I'm not smart enough to figure it out, but um, yeah, scrap the jalopy. Oh, I, <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, a, it's, I, know, I guess what it's I was like trying to think about it's recklessness to a point. Yeah, like okay, I was, yeah, um, as soon as you get money, let's let's buy whatever. And I just, you know. <laughs> This song aside, like I just always picture myself. Anytime I ever think about having a lot of money, it's always like, how am I going to give this money away? Like it's never about like what I'm, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. It's it's so tempting to buy stuff, and I do like to buy stuff. You know, I love toys and gadgets and stuff like that. But everything mm -hmm. I buy that I want to buy, there's a purpose to it. There's something that it there's a service that the thing that I want to buy provides. It's going to make me feel it's going to allow me to do something that I like. You know, it's a new camera yeah. that costs a lot of money, but I know why I know why it costs a lot of money and I want the things that that money provides. It's never just like I want this. I was listening to yeah. uh Robert Kelly and Rich Ross. They were talking about a watch, like a Rolex watch that they were like obsessed about trying to find. It was like fifteen thousand dollars. And I'm like Never, I, I don't care how much money I ever had. A fifteen thousand dollar Rolex watch would never ever be something I'd be interested in buying. Like, no, you know, just the only time I would ever like have one in my possession is if like my grandfather gave it to me as like a yeah, like, but then it's like not a, even a matter of money. It's like exactly, yeah, completely different thing. Like that yeah, has meaning. Yeah, like you, right. you said, like I remember some kid that used to I used to work with. Same thing. He goes. He goes, oh, yeah, I, gra uh, I graduated from college. So my parents bought me um, a watch. And it just so happens that it's like with the first watch that was on the moon. What, what's the name? What was the name of that uh, name of that company? Well, I don't know. It's. Um, yeah, the other big watch uh, company is <laughs> like a. Yeah, it's like the one that has like all the gadgets and stuff on it. But it was yeah, it's yeah, the one know, yeah. that was like yeah. the first watch on the moon or what I. Right. it shows you just how much i care and know about yeah, right, um, right. like it, it was six thousand dollars i'm like you're walking around the street the smallest whitest looking kid in the world yeah. no matter where you are and you're yeah. wearing a six thousand dollar watch dude your arm's gonna get ripped off mm -hmm. like it's yeah <laughs> like mm -hmm. i don't know why you think that's a smart move yeah right. i mean so no, silly it's just so yeah. dumb mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you but know, like you're saying, like if your grandfather gave you watches, would but it, be a close second. If it, well, car, but then there's like an expensive car, you're getting something for that money. Like you're getting, like if you have a driven, yeah, well, like, and there's a breaking point. Well, like, 10 nobody of needs, them. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> no one needs five Lamborghinis in the driveway. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's stupid. But, yeah. yeah. I would always criticize like people when I was really young. I'm like, uh, Mercedes Benz just costs a lot of money. You know, it's just they're paying for the name. And then I drove a Mercedes and I was like, oh, I get it. Uh, that's, yeah. That's okay. No, it's not just the, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, but like why? Like, you know, if you, it has nothing to do with, um, like you said, the price. And like, if you if your grandfather gave you a ten thousand dollar Rolex watch, that would be about. But it would be the same mm -hmm. thing if like if he were a you know a, a Timex watch every day, and that was what you associated with your grandfather was a Timex. And exactly. gave that to you, you'd, you would find that just as valuable as you did the Rolex watch. You know, Omega. By the way, that's it. Omega. Omega. Yes, that wasn't the name I was thinking of, but yeah. Yeah, it was anyway. the Apollo Eleven watch. Oh that's yeah, what, you gotta what, have that's that. what he went and got. Yeah, that's, you need that. Like, I think he's lying to me about, about the price too. I don't think it was six grand. And more than that, or less than that? <laughs> oh, I can't imagine how much how expensive those watches are. Yeah, they just make um, like a select few of them. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what we. That's so. That's where we're yeah. going now with this song. Is that's where we're at. <laughs> Nobody don't need any money. <laughs> Nobody needs any money. Yeah. Uh, it was a success story. Everybody want to copy, but few work for it. Most get jerked for it. If you think that you can ignore it, you're ignoring A fat wallet still never made a man free. They say to eat good, yo, you got to swallow your pride. But that dad game plan, I'm not satisfied. The poor get work, the rich get richer. The world gets worse, do you get the picture? The poor gets dead, the rich get depressed. The ugly get mad, the pretty get stressed. The ugly get violent, the pretty get gone. The old get stiff, the young get stepped. I just wanted to get to that. This the woman singing, yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. I have no idea what that uh instrument is. It's a it uh, oboe. It, it could be an oboe. <laughs> it's a possibility. I just saw a meme the other day. I, I I thought it was so funny. I, I love memes. I hate that. I hate that I love mm -hmm. memes so much. But God damn, oh, so, so I, I, it's it's the new form of communication. I know. You can I just tell so like, much. You could say so much in a meme. <laughs> yeah, but like I just want to be able to write. Oh, I'm so impressed. Like I'm like, there's so many funny people out there. Like they, they just yeah, sometimes yeah. you read a meme. Like that's as funny as any stand up bit I've ever seen in my life. And there's one, there's it, like, three, like two yeah. lines, and that's like it's hilarious. And I'm not saying this is one of them, but this one I I, I talk, talk about it. This was about a tuba. It said, girl, are you a tuba? Because you're getting played by a really weird dude. I thought it was so funny. <laughs> yeah, you always picture tuba players being weird. Getting they played are. By a really weird dude. Um, so maybe it's a tuba. Who knows? Um, yeah, but I love that What's hook. What's weirder, though? A, a, a tuba or a French horn, you think? Like, like the French horn, bigger? you know? You put your fist in the French horn, though. Like yeah, whoever, no, came, a, whoever thought yeah. that was an idea. It's a weirder. You're getting, you're getting fisted by an even weirder person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you a French horn? Because you're getting fisted by a really weird dude. That would be. <laughs> that's the elevator version of that. Oh God. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a good. See, look at that. You just came up with one. Well, you came up with one. You. You, well, you said half fisted part, but um. Yeah. <laughs> That's what there's this account, Florida man or whatever, but sometimes he'll take a meme yeah. and like he'll cross out words and he'll make the, you know, like he'll take the meme from one level and he just completely like mm -hmm. completely makes it inappropriate. That's what he would do. Makes he would it say, kill you and he'd cross yeah. out and he put French horn and he would say, <laughs> and he'd write fisted instead of, uh, yeah. Uh, I always felt bad for those kids in school. They were, like their parents were like, yeah, I'm going to make you play the tuba or the French horn or they decide to pay. And they got to take that fucking thing on the bus. I know. Like I just that's all I picture is just these kids sitting on the bus with this gigantic tuba case. Yeah. And they gotta lug it around. Thing weighs like three times more than they do. Uh huh. And would you play the trumpet, right? Yeah, the trumpet. I went I small. Mean, that's the coolest of all the you know the it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I didn't play any intro. I I played the drums in fourth grade and then I lasted about two days because I want like I you have to learn how to be like bop, bop, 
bop. Like that's how you start playing yeah. drums. You, you know, I was like, but I would like, I want, I saw people playing drums, like, you know, and I was like, when are we going to do like, I just kept, I wouldn't stop like drum rolling and like hitting things. <laughs> when are we going like, to do the cool stuff? <laughs> they're like, we'll get to that. You can't just do that now. And I was like, I don't, and then finally the teacher was like, mm -hmm. you can either do it what I'm telling you, or you can leave. And I said, I just left in fourth grade. I was like, no, no I don't want to do, I don't want to take the time to learn how to play the drums. I just want to do, yeah. do, let's just hit the stuff. And then I left. The so finally he spawned at the age of nine. <laughs> yeah so that was uh that was the end of my yeah. music career but so then i was like when it came time to pick band or um chorus i was like well if i pick mm -hmm. chorus i don't need to carry around an instrument so i could just I, I my voice comes with me everywhere i go and then i was in voice yeah. and i was I, I was in chorus and my voice was so bad the teacher told me just to lip sync <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go look at that you went you went from point a to point z yeah. and it just enabled you to do nothing like yeah, i want to exactly. i want to I went as far as to like, I want to start the drums and I just yeah. want to beat the shit out of them and just do it at like all the cool stuff to now I'm in chorus and I didn't even singing. I didn't even say I'm doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Just lip syncing. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, ended like, and then I was like, you know, I love music more than anything. And it's like, I, you know, I've done stand up for years mm -hmm. and I did, I've done photography. And it's like, if I could sing or play an instrument, I wouldn't do any of that stuff. Like, but I just can't do the one thing I would love to do. So I have to fill, find all these other mm -hmm. things to keep my, keep myself occupied. Uh, but yeah, yeah, if I could, you know, I, we had a short lived uh, rap dream. And like, I, I'm like, how can I love rap so much and just be so bad at like, how can I not have picked up any skill of this? Like I've, I've done nothing but listen to this music. I picked up nothing. Uh -huh. I don't know how to do this at all. Like yeah. I, I can't even just emulate somebody. Like it's just, uh, I guess it wondering. is amazing. It's this, the same way in sports too. You see like all these like baseball nerds, they can't yeah. even throw a ball though. Like he's like the real big time like right. guys that keep yeah, the, like book the numbers the games. Game. Yeah. Yeah. And they like, that's all they do is watch baseball. They love baseball so much. They live it and they can't even swing a bat, yeah. throw a ball or run. Mm -hmm. Like they can't even do one of the three. And one of the right. thing, three things required to play baseball. They can do is throw of it. <laughs> <laughs> they can't stand for extended periods of time. No. Um, I'm just, I'm sorry. I just, there's an ad showing on my safari and they're showing somebody took a McDonald's burger and then they just took four nuggets and placed it on the base of it. And then they stacked it and nothing has looked grosser to me in my life. than. That's, did you see, that's what they're doing now. Every commercial they're there. It's like customize your own McDonald's stack. And you just add nuggets to a burger. You put whatever you want on there. Yeah. How gluttonous yeah. do we need to get? It's country? terrible. Oh, yeah. God. By the by the way, so, uh, one of my uh, <laughs> one of my uh, peers made a uh, um, his own McRibs the other day, and I thought about you. Yeah. He made he made homemade McRib. Yeah. Wow. Impressive. Same way. Like, same made, like at home, yeah. like mate, like mate took the, at home, the stuff homemade. To... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah i but anyway like you were saying like the sports guys like maybe that's why they love it so much because they find it so impressive maybe that's why i love rap so much because yeah. i'm so impressed it's that like living vicariously almost yeah. yeah and which is why yeah. i'm not impressed with bad rappers because i'm like i hear people like mumble rap and doing something I'm like I'm like i could do that like that's not impressive because yeah. i could do <laughs> that, that i could like, do that's yeah. all, like you just got to find the confidence to deliver it the way they mm -hmm. do it and then you're doing it but there's no actual like skill involved so that's why i'm not impressed no. by it. like i'm impressed by people doing things i could never do you know, mm -hmm. like you hear uh, Raekwon talk about uh, mumble rap. No. Oh boy, does he? Does he not it. like it? <laughs> oh, not a bit. <laughs> no, not a fan. Yeah, no. Shocked. No, not yeah. a fan. I remember there was like an interview I saw with him like five years ago or so, and yeah, uh, yeah I mean, he just basically anybody who does anything like that, just no respect from uh, from Mr. Cuban Links. Yeah. Nothing. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to be so careful to not be the old guy saying like these kids these days, but at the same time, it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. there's uh, to me, there's in, with rap music, there's such a clear line. Like I don't see the feel that way about rock music. I think rock music is like, there's still good, you know, people that are talented and it's like, I don't mind mm -hmm. electronic DJs. Like I, like I, I don't mind a lot of stuff. So I feel justified in saying like, no, like there's a clear line in like skill in these, in like these two things. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, have you yeah. seen the uh instagram live of lupe fiasco talking about asap rock yeah yeah yeah, yeah. did you watch that yeah I, yeah, watched I, the whole I thing, yeah watched that again like a week or so ago and yeah, uh, great. yeah really i mean great he was story. it was like 50 something minutes yeah he really yeah. does mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean that's like you're getting to the point there where now like 
it's like game recognized game almost. But yeah. now when a lot of like LL Cool J was talking about ASAP Rock, like how he was one of his favorite lyricists right now. Yeah. Like that's like, like when you're like, okay, so now it's like, you're almost like, it's like uh, verifying your own bias. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, so I think people... this person's great. And now like the goats are saying that like, he's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And it's so great because like Lupe, I could see, cause he's, you know, I don't know. I, if you listen to him, you can kind of like, you would imagine that he, you know he mm -hmm. might like ASAP Rock if you heard him. Oh, Cool J, no, yeah. like he was like he was never that no. deep with his rap. So it's like the first yeah. time I heard that, I'm like, did, did he mean to say ASAP Rocky? Like ASAP Rocky, yeah. But he like he definitely didn't. Like he it, definitely did. Clear, no. that, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if ASAP and lyricists have ever been mentioned in the same set. To be <laughs> yeah. quite honest, he's not bad though. Like I don't, I don't mind. He's like, not bad. He's not bad. But I yeah, mean, come on, right. it's not even like on the same level. No, it's not. But it just it's a. It, the, you know, the, you can't help but like you still have that annoyance of like, why would you name yourself this? Like, didn't you do the slightest yeah. bit of research before you named yourself? Yeah, to no. be like, oh, there's already somebody who's been around for 20 years that has that name, like a similar yeah. name. Maybe I'll change it up, but no. Yeah. Even like, yes, uh, the other day I went to go listen to, I was listening to some David Cross stand up and I just typed in Apple Music, David Cross. And like he had a bunch of albums, like it was a bunch of albums listed that I never heard of. I'm like, where are all these? Like, when did you release all these albums? And I click on him and it's like a musician named David Cross. Different guy. Yeah. And it's like, it's just like, am, you know, ambient music. And I'm like, first of all, Apple, you know, I, you know, Apple music should be able to differentiate these. It shouldn't show up in the same. Cause I literally clicked on like artist David Cross and it showed like his albums. And it, sh and it was like, it was listed under the artist page of David Cross. And I'm like, if you can't separate okay. that. And also like, if you're a musician, like just, if you're any type of artist, just Google your name. See what comes up. If something comes up, change your name. Like we're, you know. Yeah. But I guess, I guess if you Googled ASAP Rocky, ASAP Rock wouldn't just show up. So you know. No. I guess maybe you wouldn't know. Uh, what are we talking about? J Live. I don't know. Uh, I want to talk about the hook of this because yeah, yeah, just you know. So the poor get worked. I can attest to that. Although I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not poor, but I get worked, and I work. Yeah. <laughs> I work for my money. <laughs> You know, yeah. but I had to work 12 hours a week, a, a day to a week. Imagine 12 hours a day to get what I have, you know? So, uh, the rich get richer. I, yeah, I think everybody knows that the world's get world gets worse. <laughs> Accurate as well. Uh, you get the picture. I'm telling you, I get the picture. I don't know what, you know, the poor yeah, it's like it, dead. The, pa the past year, the past year has been, or the past two years, I guess is like the personification of the rich get richer. And it's almost like, it's like yeah. everybody who says they believe in one thing is just an absolute fucking liar because like, you're like, okay, so let me, uh, I'm, I'm for the working man. I'm a pro union for the working man politician. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down on every fucking business just so Amazon, Walmart, and all these yeah. other people can get rich and richer uh -huh. and richer and richer and richer. Yeah. And 75% of restaurants in Manhattan or whatever the crazy number is will go out of business, but yeah. all the McDonald's and everything's open. Like that's like, yeah, it's just that, that like that makes me just on fire. I know it yeah. doesn't, it's just not, you know, it's hypocritical. It's just, it's not yeah. in keeping with what they're selling. And it's just, you know, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, but these guys, you know, they, they provide, you know, cheap food. So they have, they, we have to make sure that they stay in business. It's like whatever justification yeah. they have to be like, exactly. Like they have enough money. Yeah, they, like just, they have, they're yeah. good. Like they'll make it work. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. literally people can't afford to feed their families. These people are like, well, but they have to keep the number has to keep going up or else they'll, they'll die. Yeah. Will they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah ridiculous the poor gets dead well i mean yeah. everybody gets dead so yeah. <laughs> it's just at a faster it's rate just matter, it's just it's a matter of uh just where a long timeline the yeah. dead happens yeah exactly and how yeah um the rich get depressed oh that's too bad do they it's a shame <laughs> yeah uh the ugly get mad hmm, that's interesting <laughs> um it's hurtful i mean yeah I was just uh, listening to a comic. This is uh, Nick Vatterot. I, I had to buy a special. It's not streaming anywhere. Okay. But he's like, no, I don't know my favorite him. comics. He's just so bizarre. He like spends a half of his set just screaming, like just sounds <laughs> just out of nowhere. But he was saying how, uh, you know, that, I don't know how the 
key to dating. He goes, but the, you know, a good start is like, uh, be born beautiful. He's like, that's certainly a, you know, a help. And like, he says like, you know, cause I'm just a nice guy, but how do I show that off at a bar? And he's goes like, <laughs> walk around the bar. Like, yeah. Oh, can I get you that? Can I get you that from him? Oh, careful. There's a slip. He's like walking around the bar, just like doing all nice things. Right. But it's like, yeah. It's funny. Uh, I don't know if he means literally ugly get mad like the ugly people, but you know, yeah, like if literally part of it too is if you're attractive, you also get more benefits in life. Like you just do, exactly. you know, like yeah, yeah, that's just the way it I've works. literally seen yeah. that in my life. Like when I'm heavier, like people literally treat me different if I'm heavier than when I'm thinner. Like I've you know I've mm -hmm. been somewhat heavy, but it's just like and maybe it's also I don't know that might be a self prophecy that i'm just i feel better so i just I, I present myself more pleasantly and then i get that back yeah so. i mean i think i think it could go both ways but you're all seen as an inconvenience and that's part of it as well uh, right. like especially like you go anywhere it's just like the fat person's always an inconvenience and that's just kind of like an unconscious bias that most people have yeah it right. is yeah i mean yeah. like i go i sit on an airplane and i'm the same way. like I, that could be the person in the world but I'm an asshole. So when I go on an airplane, I'm like, okay, this guy's got already fucking established that he's got the armrest and half of my seat. Right, so exactly. I, I'm already pissed. Like, but yeah. that's like, yeah. yeah and then I mean, even I mean, deeper, it's like people go like, criticize him, like, oh, you know, you your your health is increasing the you know the insurance rates because you you know you don't yeah. you can't keep healthy. Like, and that's but yeah. You know, nobody wants to be fat you know what i mean no. it's like there's something there's something yeah. deeper anybody who's like heavy is like okay there's something deeper here like there's something that yeah you addressed um well you must i'm like yeah. but well, you're tall so but nobody can blame mm -hmm. you for that so like you're an inconvenience a lot of times but it's and like all the time but, yeah but yeah. it's like yeah but what the fuck am i i want to do cut off myself yeah. off the knees to, yeah <laughs> like I, I i can't help that my femur bone grew like i don't, yeah. I don't know what to tell you <laughs> yeah exactly uh yeah. oh my god the airplanes are just like the past two weeks i've been on so many airplanes and now yeah. it's like like I'm, I, re I just realized i can't like i'm bougie i can't sit in coach i just can't yeah. do it well, so do yet you, somehow i'm you, gonna have to live in coach and i can't do it i don't fit does your, does your company pay for first uh first no, class? no i would have to pay for the first class upgrade if i wanted it but now do you get um I was going to ask you this when we were texting about your new job. So do you get yeah. like, you have an expense card. They pay mm -hmm. for your travel, obviously. Yeah. But do you book it yourself? Like, and then you get the miles on your credit card and then like you can, or did like, does it go straight through them? No. So you can, um, it goes straight through their card, but you can have like a miles program built in where I get them. All right. So, so like I have you, like American you, and Delta and Southwest. So I'll, yeah, I'll eventually I'll continue get flying like free upgrades. Yeah. You'll be getting free upgrades eventually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I don't even need that. Dying. Like, that's the thing. Like, I just need the emergency exit row. <laughs> that's all I ask for. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm that easy. Yeah. But the thing is, like, I literally don't fit. Like I threw back, I flew back from JFK the other day. I mean, it was an hour and 45 minutes. I might as well have been waterboarded. Like that's basically <laughs> yeah. what it feels like. Uh -huh. I actually, I, I probably would have rather like, been it's claustrophobic. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. feel the way like if I go to like a like a theater like a like a New York City mm -hmm. theater, it's like people were different sizes back then. They were just not when they met. Yes, like yeah, that it was like oh, 1907. Yeah, my grandfather was like, or my great great grandfather was like five three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, literally, like like yeah. I'm I'm not I'm only six foot, and I'm just like I'm jammed in there. I'm thinking like if anybody was any taller than me, they would <laughs> have to. Yeah, it would be kneeing the person's head behind like in front of them. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. And people think I'm uh, nuts, like because they put their seat back in front of me. Like if that if that happens, then it's just like instant rage. Right. Like they put their seat back. Like I already am like hovering because I don't fit. Yeah. <laughs> and then they put a seat back and I just start elbowing the back of the seat. Like it's full uh -huh. on like ground and pound right. on the seat. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know why they don't just not allow this. Like it's such a problem, but they just either have them all reclined or none of them reclined. Like we just, yeah. You know, yeah. Or like, just give me an inch, an inch more space. You got to yeah. jam you know, in that extra seat back an by inch, the shitter. An inch at every, yeah. an inch at every, uh, every seat, every seat two adds rows. up to a whole yeah. row by the time you get to the end. Yeah. And that's another, you know, that's it. another thousand seven hundred dollars they can make on a, on a flight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, this is, this, boy, this is really, yeah. The, Okay. So we're talking about J Live. 
Yeah, well, it's a good, you know, it's, it generates conversation. Good segues. That's what the yeah. podcast should be. We literally go by through the lyrics mm-hmm. and it generates conversation about, you know, whatever yeah. we're talking about. How the funny that the, uh, the ugly get mad and we end up talking about airplane that, seats. <laughs> that's, that's actually yeah, it's old. What's that? I'm like, wait, am I ugly now? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm mad more than I'm stressed. Does that mean I'm ugly? <laughs> yeah. And then the pretty get gone. Hmm? Pretty get gone. I don't know what that means, but well, um, because well, because the ugly killed them. Oh, okay, makes sense. Hence the violent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the old gets stiff, or the young gets stepped on. <laughs> it could go either way too. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. the old gets stepped on as well. Uh, whoever told you that it was all good lied. Throw your fist in the uh, up if you're not satisfied. Uh, yeah. Who's satisfied? Who's just satisfied? <laughs> Who's walking around life yeah. just like I'm a hundred percent satisfied? What? I'm sure there's somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I think everyone's definition of satisfied is different. Like my definition of satisfied, like I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with most things. Right. At this point, like I'm not yeah. satisfied. Like I mean, like I have enough money where I'm okay. Like I'm not rich by any means. I'm just right. like fully entrenched in the middle class. But I'm satisfied that I don't have to struggle for the next paycheck, like to put food on the table. Right. I'm also satisfied that my kids are not pieces of shit. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think it's just yeah, it's all I, expectations, and it's like exactly you know yeah. right. That's but, why. That's why I think rich people are less satisfied than like most poor people because most poor people kind of see the world a little important. bit differently. Yeah, there's actually like they get the they actually understand what's important rather than yeah whatever they're made, of... they're forced to it's like you, you exactly. you'd be you'd yeah. be driven mad if you were like I, and then the whole rich thing is like you have to keep up and you have to like compare yourself yeah. to other rich it people it's, status, it's just yeah. it's a constant thing like where you're trying to get to get to the next level but mm-hmm. yeah i don't have that and i'm i guess i'm you know i'm mostly satisfied i, I spend i walk around most of the day p- happy and pleasant with my you know mm-hmm. pleased with my situation but you know i don't know until someone makes a left hand turn in front of you with no blinker, then it's yeah, fucking it's game on. I'm no longer satisfied. <laughs> yeah. But and then but then you could also be like, well, if you consider the state of like there's always something to look to find exactly to be not satisfied yeah. about. Like if you think about like, well, you know, I'm lucky that I have it well, but I you know, I could really be I was watching a documentary about Dick Gregory yesterday. And like so he was like this you know, famous comic and he was made like made to, he was making tons of money. And um like he ended up going out to Mississippi and he was like, you know, helping, you know, like March and he was doing all this. And like, he just, he, he walked away from show business. Cause like, this is, I have to, this is more important. Like I, I can't, I can't yeah. worry about like show business when I'm, when I'm, and, and it's like so honorable, obviously, but um, you know, if you thought about that, like, oh, I should be doing more for like people who aren't as <laughs> <laughs> lucky. Like you could, you could drive yourself nuts. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, you look at that, the guy yeah i'm always like my i'm my, my best service that i can have is being pleasant to strangers and like just being mm-hmm. like nice to people that i meet throughout the street because sometimes that's like i can change somebody's mood and like if you change people's mood takes. throughout the day like then you're doing like then that is good that's service to be like you know you ever like just say hi to or, like somebody say hi to you like you're in a bad mood and somebody just like nice to you and it kind of just it changes your like mm-hmm. oh yeah i was being like in my head i was being a dick like uh, yeah. yeah, how are you? Right, you know, thanks for being like they just shake you out of your bad mood. It's like mm-hmm. well, there's so. a there's a I don't know if it's an Instagram page or like a there's something uh, that I follow where the guy goes around and does that in in uh, New York City. So he the best the best one I've seen is that he he did posted one the other day where he goes down like he goes by somebody rolls the window down. And you think he's going to be an asshole, but he like tells him something super nice. Yeah, I've seen some so, of those. Yeah, like, like yeah, you handled yeah, really like, good today, or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. But the other day, he get, there's these two like huge black dudes sitting on the hood of a car, like all like t-shirt, like uh, shirts cut off and everything yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, and he goes by and he goes, "Hey, leave some women for the rest of us." <laughs> 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 and the guys were dying. I they yeah, absolutely loved it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, just like stuff like that. Like that stuff makes me happy. Like that's like. I mean, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when it's like, I can't get so on edge. The, so the tension of like, yeah. oh shit, where is it? Like, what, yeah, because where exactly. Is yeah. Yeah. Like, like they turn around, they're like, they turn around, like, they're like literally hopping over the car to come get him. Like he didn't say anything other than, hey. Hey, yeah. And they just expect, like, right, here's yeah. this, yeah, this white guy, what's he going to yeah. say? You know, it's like, what kind yeah. of, they do, I've seen that those two were like, was somebody like, well, 
like what have like a like a juice or like a some type of food item, whatever. And they come marching back in the place and like, hey, who made this? Who made this? And like, so like, oh, and it was me. It was like, delicious. this is the best goddamn milkshake I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and she, he's like, thank you so much. Keep up the good work. And then like, you walk out. Yeah. It's like, but the first thing is like, oh, we got a lunatic. Oh, what's going on? What's going to happen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a crazy person. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get back to the song for a little bit. Yeah. Got my old lurk wearing a mask and gloves to get a mail. I know a older guy that lost 12 post peeps on 911. Why you kicking up punchlines and puns, man? Fuck that shit. This is serious biz. By the time Butch is done, you won't know what time it is. If it's war time or jail time, time for promises and time to figure out where the enemy is. Uh, I was, uh, I'm just checking out a little bit during that. <laughs> I was in and out trying to <laughs> layer my windows. Um, but yeah, there's some, uh, there's some, Good stuff. So very ironic that he's talking about anthrax making the entire earth wear gloves and a mask. Yeah. To get right? That's yeah. That's I know there's always 20 like years that. early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um it's so funny. It's always a threat. And like we always knew like that was you know, oh, if something happens, we're gonna have to cover up and we have to do that. Like, you know, like the yeah, so many Asian countries they walk around like you know, you'd be in the airport and they'd be wearing masks and gloves, and you'd be like Oh, weirdos and then you realize like oh they actually have to deal with this stuff so like they like yeah and it's like they i remember i took a flight like kind of before the covid actually got here maybe there was like that one case in california it was like and i was on yeah, a flight yeah, probably like end of january february yeah, yeah. i was flying out to florida and i remember like <clears throat> it might maybe it was a little more serious because like i had gloves and a mask and like i was with a couple other people and like we um we like we put on as a joke, like we put on the mask and gloves. We took a picture. I was like, oh, can you imagine? Like, look at us. And then uh, he's like, no, literally, that's what you're gonna. Do. That's that's what you're gonna be doing. It's not a joke. Like, yeah. you know, you're gonna be wearing a mask on a flight. Um, did he throw out some like? I feel like he threw out some like five percent of language, like uh, mm -hmm. like Wu Tang lingo. <laughs> um, I don't think so. No, I thought you said like something like maybe I, I was like I said I was in and out. Oh yeah, anthrax got my old earth. So what does old earth mean? Because I feel like isn't that something? It's like I haven't we heard that like in like Wu Tang. <laughs> this is me learning. I don't know uh, a different culture in real time. I'm like the old earth. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just an old English it, reference. Again, you're dealing with an English teacher, so yeah, you're yeah. dealing with a very smart human being. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Google doesn't know what to do with the search. All Earth. They're like, no. what? Earth? Like Earth? All what are Earth. You, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I feel like, um, I don't know what I'm try trying to get at. It doesn't matter. Um, oh, look, uh, you know what? You were right. Look at this. Look at you. Look at what you. What is all it, all earth is a five all earth is a five percenter term meaning mother and sometimes wife gods were the men and earths were the women yes see wow. i knew i knew Look something about where i feel like i've heard raekwon say like refer to all earth all and earth. just in the context okay. in in the context thinking he was talking about his wife or his girl so like when i heard yeah. so yeah the anthrax got my old earth wearing a mask and gloves to get got my out. wife yeah got yeah my so wife he's got his wife and mask. potentially mother yeah um there you go look at that yeah i'm so i'm so proud of myself right now you should, could be <laughs> that was spectacular yeah that whole five percent uh thing is I, I would love to see a documentary on that that's like just uh i've read so much on that over the years i know so nothing about it, it well it's so it's feel like it's so confusing and like they take from it's so much so different confusing. things and it's like yeah. yeah yeah um yeah it's like it's meant to be confusing it's almost as if they meant that yeah they just they don't want uh it to be easily accessible to white people yeah. so they can they don't steal <laughs> like they've that. stolen every everything else they love <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I mean, that's the whole point of it like let's just come up with some bullshit we'll constantly change the definition of it so like they can never like we'll always be chasing it and they'll never they'll never know what it is just when they think they get it no we change the definition of what it is again that's right yeah um so yeah bush god damn this was during bush Wow, it feels it's like I feel like a thousand years old. Like I was like, yeah. And then, um, and then, uh, what was it? And then three years later, three years, no, seven years later, Obama. 
yeah so that, i mean this was like the beginning of bush yeah. too i guess right yeah jesus yeah this is this is right after yeah because obama was what oh eight yeah yeah i know wow uh Let's see what else Jay Life has to say. Used to love to hate. They got you so gassed and shook now. You scared to debate. The same ones that traded books for guns. Smoked drugs for funds. and had fun letting off 41. But now it's all about NYPD caps and Pentagon bumper stickers. But yo, it's still a nigga. It ain't right them cops and them firemen die. That shit is real tragic. But it damn sure ain't magic. It won't make the brutality disappear. All right. So I guess she's talking about post 9-11. Like... Mm -hmm. these guys are heroes because they were for that time yeah. heroes you know like they stepped mm -hmm. in and they did shit that i w wouldn't have the balls to do you know my father was on the site like digging up bodies and you know like mm -hmm. yeah. uh and like you're at a you're at the scene of like who knows if they're gonna come back and like you know do something after the tragedy yeah. like so yeah like there's I, just so I, much uncertainty uncertainty right yeah, yeah. but now you're talking about a black person is like, yeah, no, I see that they're doing good, but also that guy that's literally like saving, you know, like lives and stuff like that. He he beat me yeah. up last week because I was standing on the corner for no reason. It's like, so how do I like I'm yeah, I I can't not call this person a hero because he's literally being a hero now. But in from yeah. my perspective, that guy, I don't like that guy personally. I literally personally don't like that that one guy. Exactly. Like, that's a specific person. Yeah, like yeah. and they he says letting off 41, and that's the 41 bullets they shot at uh Amadou Diallo. Right. Right, exactly. So it's like, you know, being black in yeah. New York at that time had to be very confusing to be like, everybody's calling them, you know, it's all about NYPD caps. Everybody's walking around like supporting the NYPD. And it's like, that was the enemy to so many people, you know? Yeah, and then I happened. also, it's like, it's exactly, it's so strange, like how cyclical everything is, like exactly what's happening right now. Right, like right, right. In Canada. So you go to Canada, basically right now in Ottawa, you basically just get run over and trampled by horses and everybody's cool with it. Like why is that type of police brutality? Okay. Uh -huh. And all this other stuff, not okay. Like they're right. really beating the shit out of people. They're like boarding up businesses. If you like sold someone a cup of coffee, like if you saw there, they bought up a coffee shop that was selling these people coffee. Like that's how, that's what it's like right now. Yeah. And then you, yeah. they're like trampling people and beating them, like being them on the ground, punching them in the face while I'm on the ground. That's cool because of what for whatever reason yeah. <laughs> because of a peaceful protest or whatever has happened but like if it happened like with an nypd cop right black on white or white on black doesn't matter it's yeah. not it's not cool like I, it's so strange yeah i don't know i i be honest like i haven't I, i've heard you know the headlines like that but i have not dug deep yeah. in you know in that whole yeah situation but you know yeah it's it sounds bad. it sounds backwards you know to, from what yeah. i've heard it sounds backwards to me but yeah i'm not educated enough to make like a real neither am i i just a, catch the headlines statement. and then do a little no, research not press on the headline <laughs> right yeah yeah well the truckers are mad so i'm like yeah all i know is that if the mainstream media is not paying attention to it it's probably something i should pay attention to <laughs> exactly right yeah, yeah. That should be that should be a marketing tool for uh, uh you know some yes. online news service be like yeah mm -hmm. yeah just all the things that aren't getting talked about and then that's you know yeah i feel like that i don't know npr i feel like they're just so boring like they literally talk about yeah, the news like tough. they literally like to state the news but like with zero pizzazz so it's like no. it's it's it shows like you do need to liven up a little bit like bc you know bbc i was almost said bcc mm -hmm. because i'm <laughs> i'm a rap fan bb well, but, you throw that in a google search though you could come across the long thing no that's that's bbc <laughs> yeah that's so that's actually that's what, what i was saying. looking for yeah, the BBC. BBC. yeah yeah um well that's it that's what i'm saying that too yeah right you throw that in a google search and click on images you might be in for a rude awakening <laughs> yeah that's what the news should talk about <laughs> that is newsworthy what i'm looking at right yeah. now um yeah like those those places like they do literally just tell you know and mm -hmm. you know people will say they're left-leaning because i don't know maybe i don't know the news but they like I said, they just they need somebody on there that's entertaining and knows how to speak with some mm -hmm. vibrato and uh not just so monotone. Yeah, yeah that's um, a, I mean that's all I that's all I listen to now is just people who have nothing to do with anything near like uh one guy I listen to a lot is um the hell's his name. 
Oh, ironically enough, like Jimmy Dory. Like he does uh who? Jimmy Door. He does uh, Jimmy Door. Jimmy Door. Yeah. You listen to the Jimmy Door show? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. And uh that's like, so he's funny. A, like I've... he's a pretty unbiased guy. Like he becomes No, he'll like, criticize anybody. Yeah, he'll too, obviously. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. I actually and, haven't and listened to him. Believe it or not, like Bill Maher now. I haven't listened to you listen to Bill Maher now? Well, yeah, he's another like, unbiased yeah. guy. Like, you know, they they that's to say like yeah, that's the thing. Like, I listen to him. Like, I don't think his positions have changed. I right. just think it's gotten so fucking crazy that he yeah. seems like he's now like a right wing person. Like, it's yeah, so right. nuts. Yeah, I'm like I heard him say this like a decade ago. <laughs> right, but the, like you said, there are they they are unbiased. Like they they have yeah. opinions that lean towards one side. But if somebody says mm -hmm. something that doesn't make sense, they will call it out no matter who that person is. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, Jimmy um, Dore's good. I, I probably listen to him more than anybody else. That's funny. Yeah, I gotta start listening to him again because I, I used to yeah. listen to him when he did a just a, it was like more comedy show. It's gone from like it started out with comedy. It's so he both first still, but yeah, yeah, he, yeah, and he'll do bits and like does he still have that guy Frank Conniff on that does like the uh, impressions and stuff? Does he still they, they still do like, did, like every bits once and stuff while, like that? Yeah, he'll do stuff like that. Yeah, every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. I like that because I got yeah they, they he had like some good impressionists on there that he did. Mm -hmm. he used to do a guy that did um Tony Soprano would call up. And okay. Like he would, they would do like, a, but the guy's Tony Soprano was spot on, and he would like, <laughs> yeah, just ridiculous. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's funny. I have to check back into that. I haven't listened to him since he got like. I forget who. I, like, why do I not remember the names on it? I just like pay. I like I pay attention so much. I'm not paying attention. Like I'm just listening yeah. to what they say. Like I'm not really so. Like. Right. I don't care who's saying it. Almost. Right. That's so funny. I'm so I'm like I'm honestly like happy to hear that you listen to Jimmy Dore only because that means that like he is like more successful because I was always such a fan of his. Mm -hmm. He used to do a podcast yeah. with Todd Glass and it was like the silliest thing. They used okay. to just talk that, about comedy. That, oh man, that would be fantastic. Yeah, it was great. Anybody in Todd Glass is it was like it was one of my favorite podcasts, and then they only did like yeah. a couple years and then they kind of split up because Todd Glass wanted to go sillier, and his his podcast mm -hmm. is the silliest thing you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> and then Jimmy Dore went there, like he's but like the podcast together was perfect. It's like they were trying to fight for like Tagus was trying to like insert silliness on the politics. It was like a perfect balance of like Jimmy Dore would present something political and then Tagus would make it silly. Mm -hmm. But so I'm saying that doesn't yeah. exist anymore. But he's got he got like so much push, like this is like this is the stuff that makes me bonkers. Is like so I've been listening to him for quite a while, probably a couple of years now, and he got so much backlash because he actually got injured from the COVID vaccine. So he got like he was like very hurt like he was in really? the hospital for months yeah, well, he, he had some really he had some health he's had some health issues for a long time i think right so yeah and like whatever like whatever happened like all like nerve endings were like on fire like he was just in constant pain like wow. his legs barely would move so he was like in bad shape so all of a sudden he went to like this crazy conservative person according to everybody just because he had a bad experience with because he was voicing his like, personal experience that he yeah, had because yeah. he was telling you about his personal experience and i'm like what the? i'm like have you ever listened to the man Right. I'm like, he's like so objective and right. definitely not right wing. So, that, yeah. So you like, like, I'm not allowed to tell my story because it doesn't fit the yeah, narrative yeah. of what you've been telling. Like this, and, no, this is like, I'm telling you, this is a potential outcome like to the vaccine. What I'm not, happened to me? Like, I'm sure he's not even saying like, don't get it or like, whatever. No, he's he just was, saying like, while he was saying like, it was like, I think you should still get it. But yeah, hey, just know this is, what this is a possibility. Yeah. Like, yeah. do it, have the most informed. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, god <laughs> yeah it's so it's just drives me mad like i have to stop yeah. talking like and now like at work it's like encouraged to have like these like conversations where like oh don't talk yeah. about this stuff at work now like that we're on like this inclusion and diversity thing which is great but it also right. involves like well here's the thing though is that you're also going to have people that don't have those opinions so right. don't get upset when <laughs> other people have an opposing view of what you have yeah. Like you're not going to tell a 72 year old white guy from Brooklyn that he's going to have the same uh, right. life experience right. as some kid, rich kid living in whatever uh, Apex, North Carolina. <laughs> That's the only I mean. thing you can do is try to convince people that their experiences yeah. aren't other people's experiences. So just have exactly. a little patience with people. Be like, yeah. hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you that your, you know, situation isn't what you thought it was. But don't tell me that my situation yeah. was what I think it was. And Jack, try to exactly. just be like, oh yeah, I, I didn't never thought about the fact that if you lived through this, you might approach this thing differently. Yeah, it's just it's just the per complete perspective lack. is a wonderful thing. Perspective and nuance are just wonderful yeah. things. If we could just has. create a pill. So uh, Black Mirror had a, an episode. <laughs> I never watched Black Mirror. 
And I watched a couple of you were talking about it a few years ago. I never really got too much into yeah, it. They, I haven't watched much TV. They had one that was a pill that you could take, a pill or a machine that you could take or, that, or get hooked up to that you would feel somebody else's mm-hmm. pain, like physical pain. Like, so you could, like, if somebody was going through something, you could feel what they were feeling physically. And then you would like better understand, like, a lot of doctors used it at first. Are you frozen up or am I frozen up? Um, nope. My, again, Good. my Streamlabs just quit. My stream lab just quit again. So now I got to freaking re- record. At least you got the Zoom. I but got the Zoom. And you, it'll capture what you got already, right? It doesn't delete what that footage, right? No, I it just had to start re-recording. It just, for whatever reason, I went and looked, checked it. I've been checking it just to make sure it's still there. But between OBS and Streamlabs, every once in a while, it just quits. I don't know. Why. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of processing right. power. But yeah, I guess we're up to like an hour and 10 minutes. So my camera's probably going to die soon too. So Okay. Well um we didn't get the song we didn't get the whole song in but we got it you know it, it's uh <laughs> we, we get the we you know the, it's pretty much kind of more of the same throughout the you know yeah it's that's the tone of the song is just you know it's i don't know it's a good song lyrically it's uh there was yeah there was one lyric that i wanted to get to that was at on. the end um the uh right at the end the uh Grass ain't greener on the other genocide, but tell Huey Freeman, don't forget to cut the lawn and uproot the weeds because I'm not satisfied. Um, so Huey Freeman is an Afrocentrist from the Boondocks comic strip. Okay. <laughs> it says in one comic, he told the granddad that he didn't want to cut the lawn because he thought everything should grow freely and naturally with no rules enforced. Grass ain't greener on the other side. Okay. Hold on. I got that. Yeah. Um, uh all right so what explain that to me what that means that means is that like mean um because so yeah i think what he's saying so the grass ain't greener on the other genocide i think if they kind of tie together so the grass ain't greener he's talking about grass so that's right. just obviously that's more like figurative than literal right but then he says but don't tell but tell huey freeman don't forget to cut the lawn because and uproot the weeds because i'm not satisfied so i think he's getting to the fact that we shouldn't just let everything grow freely and kind of let it do its thing, let it do what it wants. It needs to be cut and it needs to be right. kept because um, the stuff that's growing underneath might be worse than what's kind right. of there already almost. Okay. So yeah. All right. Um, I broke but the weeds. I just, uh, that line always, I just always remember that line, even when I haven't listened to it, that line always, and I just, yeah. I never really thought much deeper I mean, than I, what you was know, on the surface I, there. I know. Very basic level. I love the turn of phrase of the grass ain't greener on the other genocide. Like, you know, I'm a sucker yeah. for that very simple uh, mm-hmm. turn of phrase that, I, you know, I never would have thought of. So I'm like, no, oh, that's clever side, but genocide. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and at well, least, and like, it just shows you that he has the perspective to know that, hey, I know, like, it, like, it, like that's, the, oh, well, then go back to wherever you care, or like whatever it is. No, I understand that here is better than everywhere else. I right. get that. But that yeah. doesn't mean we can't criticize it to make it better. I mean, that's, right. they're two very different things. It's yeah. the people that say like, oh, these countries are better or this country is better. And then you're like, you might want to do some little bit of research on this country before you start throwing stones at what you got here. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not killing it. Like that there's always, yeah, like it could be better than other places, but like, yeah, but it could be perfect. Like, don't you like it? Like, it'll never be perfect, but like, shouldn't we continue yeah. to try to get to perfect? Like, yeah, like, isn't exactly. that, wouldn't that be a nice goal to be like, hey, what if we yeah. um, kept making it better? Like, it's the greatest country in the world. First of all, I'm not sure. Remember that uh, Greg Geraldo bit? He goes, we don't know that. He goes, yeah. you've never been to every country in the world. You don't know that. He's like, there could be a country where um, 80, 85% of the population are women who blow you for a nickel. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, the, yeah, and the other the other percentage of the country lines. are people who give you nickels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That was yeah. a dandy. Yeah. Um yeah. that always stuck with me. But yeah, obviously to look around and be like, oh, we're the greatest country. I'm like, okay, you're not you're like you're living in a different world than other people are. But yeah, we got a lot of great stuff. Oh, did you ever did you ever see um Newsroom? It's called Newsroom. I think it was an Aaron Sorkin show. Mm-hmm. Greg Daniels. I, wrote, I know of. I know of it. I probably. I if I saw. Uh, I'm gonna. It, I'm gonna. When we when we end this, I'm gonna send you the opening scene to that. If you never saw it, 
because he pretty much mm-hmm. says that he was like somebody asked him why is it the greatest country in the world and he's like i don't even know what the fuck you're talking about the greatest country in the world <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to him and play it to him. We should actually I want to do an episode on that opening of the thing. It's it's like so okay. brilliant. Oh my god, it's incredible. I feel like you would love the guy because he's like like the character himself. Um well that was pretty good. I enjoyed that conversation for uh, having no um no research uh, going into this. That was uh <laughs> that was a fun yeah episode. Well, we're gonna I have was just, to use the zoom because there's clearly a a problem with my stream labs because it keeps shitting about keep shutting down all right so, so i'll send you the uh yeah, yeah I'll keep send shutting you the down. Zoom. all right yeah that's fine i mean it, you know it's a zoom what's even if you just on? posted just the zoom that's it's all right just, it's you know it's, yeah, fine. it's fine yeah yeah nobody cares all right well that Sweet. was pleasant and uh <laughs> that was mostly j live <laughs> mostly j it was j live i mean you know it's a sign of a good song that it can spark you it know kind of, even if it was, was off a lot tangents of, you like, know the song itself sparked yeah. a good conversation which is you know the sign of dead. good a good song great song. yeah yeah uh all right enjoy the rest cool. of your day on this right, you rare morning record of beef with blue cheese